Hi, welcome to Spotlight. My name's Anthony Wynn, and it's my pleasure to welcome to the program a most amazing man, James Randi. He stands as one of the premier illusionists and conjurers of the 20th century. For a number of years, Randi has been concerned about the numbers of fakers, con artists, psychics, and other folks with magical claims. Noted author Arthur C. Clarke has said the following about Randi. I regard Randi as a national treasure and perhaps one of the remaining antidotes that may prevent the rotting of the American mind. Randy, welcome to the program. Glad to be here, Tony. I must tell you that quotation from Arthur Clarke got on the back of my book, the first edition, as not antidote, but anecdote. Uh, <laughs> that bad proofreading. <laughs> oh. So, but Arthur has forgiven me since. And it deserves uh, definitely to be on your book, that's for sure. I believe so, yes. Um, now, you wrote something recently uh, on your online column, and I'd like to read this statement and uh, get your reaction to it uh, for the audience. Um, you wrote, reality is where we actually live, and rationality is how we try to understand it. We Americans, along with every other human being on this planet, need to get our act together. We're here willy-nilly on the cosmic stage. Our audience is vast, all the generations who will succeed us and the overture has been played, the curtains have opened. We must deliver our lines correctly, stand facing the customers, and exchange the dialogue that makes up history. No, we'll be, we'll, we'll be gone long players, minor characters in the play, but what we do now, how we do it, and what love and dedication we put into it will be experienced for a long, long time. Let us as actors put all we have into it, give a good performance, and know that we've contributed to this exciting drama. Yeah, and I mean it too. I think uh, we really have to get our act together. Our act should be handling our lives and our, our present situation and our future situations with rationality and with logic instead of depending upon superstitious notions that belong in medieval days. Hmm. You know, so many people say, and particularly about horoscopes and about psychics in particular, that it's just harmless fun you know, it's a diversion. Do you believe it's just fun? It's not fun, Tony, when you've seen the results of it. We get people at the James Roundy Educational Foundation in Port Lauderdale just dropping by and coming in, and usually I can spot them right off. I take them into the library, we close the doors, and then they let their hair down, and they say, you know, our mother has given uh, all the money from the CDs and the mortgage and whatnot to a, to a faith healer or some evangelist or, or some prognosticator of some kind or someone who purports to speak with the dead and we can't really do anything about it you know she's a, an adult human being but she does have control of these funds what can we do mm -hmm. and often my answer has to be to them there's not much you can do because if she's got control of it if she's got control of your future and your destiny and she's absolutely convinced that she's right in this decision you really can't remedy it so it does do a lot of harm. And I'm not talking just about financial matters now, although that's always part of it. It's a case of surrendering to some sort of superstitious uh, philosophy or belief, and that can cripple you from doing real thinking about the real world. Mm. You know, um, we'll come back to this in just a minute because I, sure. I want to talk more about this. Um, but, you know, I'm curious about your childhood, your background. Um, of course, uh, for many years and to this day, uh, you're known as the Amazing Randy. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm curious, how did you get your interest? Where did your interest begin uh, with magic, with conjuring, mm -hmm. with illusions? It goes way back when. I was one of those, uh, those strange critters known as a child prodigy. I didn't go to public school. They just said, well, doesn't really need to. He's a disturbing element in the classroom. <laughs> a couple of grades ahead of the other school uh, kids. And uh, so I was a disturbing element, and I understood that. And I sort of wandered on my own. I had a truant pass and that sort of thing, in case the truant officer caught me. I, this is in Toronto, Canada. Uh, in the year three, I think it was. It was a long time ago. I barely remember it. But uh, I was, uh, it was not a, a happy time for me. Mm. I can tell you that. I uh, didn't develop a peer group, and I had problems uh, relating to uh, other kids my age, because I was mixing with adults and with uh, kids much older than I. Yeah. So I had a peculiar childhood. It was not, uh, not the standard kind of thing that the average uh, kid goes through. Sure. 
And uh, because of that, I think I developed uh, an independence of spirit, and I began to think about things rather than just accepting them as they were presented to me on the plate. Mm. Did you come from a particularly religious background or have any affiliation in that regard? Not very religious. My family was Anglican, and they sent me to Sunday school and whatnot, but I get into arguments all the time. And I would uh, say, but where's the evidence for that? You know, how can you prove that? Uh, you weren't there, were you? No, of course I wasn't there. But uh, then how do you know? It's in the book. Who wrote the book? Uh, a lot of people wrote the book, and they would break off at that point and didn't want to argue with me. And they'd send messages home saying, he wants to argue all the time. And <laughs> we're here to tell him things. We're not here to, to, to answer his questions. He's here to listen to what we have to say. Mm. Well, eventually, I, um, I used to get 25 cents to put in the collection plate. And the 25 cents eventually started to go on a double dip ice cream sundae at Purdy's Drugstore. <laughs> uh, my parents never found out, and since they're both gone now, mm. uh, you up there, folks? Well, now you know that's what happened to the quarter. <laughs> now, I've heard you mention that um, when you were about 10 years old, that uh, either something happened or you came to a realization. Um, was that this period uh, that this happened, or was it a specific event? that happened at that point? It's hard to say. That was, as I say, many, many years ago. But there was a point that came along where I realized that I had to make a stand. I had to decide whether or not I was going to believe in all the nonsense that I saw going on around me. I'm not talking about religious beliefs now. All of that was, was part of the scene, of course. But I am talking about belief in the, the paranormal and spirit churches and various things like this. Mm. And um, I had to, to, to make a stand and decide at that point, that's an early age to have to make that decision, but I did, and I said, no, I'm not going to go for it. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask them to prove their case. And uh, since then, and that's been many, many decades have passed by now, I've not seen any evidence of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it isn't there. It only means that I haven't seen the evidence, and hey, I'm willing to be shown, so if you got it, show it to me. That's right. Um, now, you uh, developed an interest in uh, conjuring yes. in illusions. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember your, your first, uh, not, not professional appearance, but your first public appearance, or your first time you, you performed um, in, in front of a group of people, perhaps? Yeah, I guess I do. Uh, it was uh, <coughs> one of those experiences which you don't forget easily. I, I mimed a Frank Sinatra tune, as a matter of fact. <laughs> But uh, up until then, at the age of, uh, of 10, I started to develop a, an interest in conjuring tricks because I realized that people were fooled by these things. And I wasn't against it because it was done for purposes of entertainment. Mm. And by the time I was 12, I was uh, rather knowledgeable about how the magicians did these things, and I had developed some skills of my own uh, with card tricks and various things like that, the basics, the fundamentals. And I found out that I was not all that bad at it. I, I could mm. manage it all right. But I also found out at the same time, and this is, the, is the, the real lesson of the whole thing, it's not so much what you do with the hands. It's not so much uh, the moves with the cards and whatnot. It's the psychology. Mm. Now, for example, if I take a, a, a thing, a simple little object, we've got a little piece of black foam here. 